Welcome to Lanzarote. And more specifically, welcome to Costa Teguise. Yeah, after the Greek Scottish summer, we thought we'd finally find some sunshine. And we've certainly found the sun here. We are staying at the Melia Paradisus Salinas Lanzarote Hotel. My goodness, that's a bit of a mouthful. The sky's blue, the sun's out. We've been here for a few days. And what have we been doing, Mrs. E? Chilling. Chilling. We'd love you to come along with us. We're going to give you a room tour. We're going to show you around the hotel. We're going to look at the restaurants and the bars and the entertainment and a few little hidden nooks and crannies along the way. So I think we should start with a room tour. What do you think? Yep. Let's go and do the room tour. We decided to go for a premium double room with sea view and as you can see that sea view is absolutely stunning right come on enough of the sea view let's <laughs> do the room tour this is our premium double room first thing we've actually got somewhere to sit these are quite comfy comfy leather chairs plant and if you wanted to you could bring a laptop you could do some work here we just prefer to bring a bottle of red wine as you would expect by the side of the bed we've got plug sockets and travel adapters there's no usb however so that's one thing to notice and in the evening they do a little bit of a turn down service and they always bring us a nice little chocolate which they leave on the bed that's always quite nice to look forward to and this is a really good idea they bring the pool towels and the beach towels to the room so there's none of that faffing about checking in at the uh, pool and the beach every day they just give you the towels and they swap them every day over here the mini bar now the mini bar is well stocked Inside we've got beer, we've got Sprite, we've got Coke, we've got water, we've got orange juice, and they will fill that up every day. It's all inclusive, we don't have to pay extra for that, which is great. Down here we've got one little packet of Munchitos. We do like the Munchitos, and we like them so much that actually what we've done is we've been to the supermarket and bought an even bigger bag of Munchitos. They are so, so delicious. Tell you what, Mrs. E, look at this kettle. That's got to be one of the best kettles I've ever seen in a hotel. Espresso cups, bigger cups, and of course, we've got an espresso machine here, plus lots of tea, coffee, and milk products. This is, I would think, more than a king size. This is a, what's it, a premium king, a double king, an emperor, a platinum king. This bed is absolutely huge, plump and squashy pillows. But the main thing is, does the bed bounce? Ooh, that is a bouncy bed. That is a bouncy bed, isn't it? Love it, absolutely. These lamps are quite cute. You have to work out which buttons make what happen. Bit of wardrobe space. We always travel light. We always travel hand luggage. We've not got much. There's plenty of drawers. Oh, steam iron, laundry bags, and a slippers. A few hangers, probably could be more hangers, and some spare cushions up here. There's also a little wardrobe with a safe inside. It's one of those safes that you press the coded entry. Welcome to the bathroom. It is actually quite compact and bijou, but there's nothing wrong with that. We've got a great big shower cubicle. And inside the shower cubicle, it's rainforest shower. Rainforest shower up there, but there is also a handheld shower that you can use here. Plenty of smelly stuff, biology smelly stuff. Now this is really nice. The hand and body wash has got ginger in it and lemongrass. It really is very, very pleasant. Single basin. It would have been nice if Mrs. E had had a separate basin herself. But as you can see, you get the usual little baby towels more smelly stuff over here 
under the sink we also have extra towels and a hair dryer and a dental kit and tissues. And finally, we have the Kazi. Well, what did you think of our room here at the Paradisa Salinas? We are really happy with the room. Now I thought I'd give you a little look around the main areas of the hotel. First thing to say is you might find the outside of the hotel looks a little brutal and a little concretey. Well, it was built between 1973 and 1976 by renowned architect Fernando Igueras, and it was described at the time as poetry in concrete. Now, when you first look at it, you might think that is a little bit ugly, but it's brutalism, isn't it? And if we have a really close look, you can find beauty. The more I walk around this resort, the more you can see the nuances of the concrete. Believe me, some of it is really quite spectacular. swimming pool and the central atrium of the hotel and all the landscaping throughout the resort were designed by Cesar Manrique and again there's an, a subtle beauty to it all and I can't wait to show you around. I do love this walkway heading up to the main reception. When you arrive in a hotel like this, your thoughts are always going to be on, where's the reception desk? Where do my bags go? But just take a moment to have a look up at the ceiling. That's some of that concrete beauty that I was talking about. All right, let's head inside the reception area of the Paradisus Salinas. Very wide, spacious reception area and again look at the ceiling that's what you're gonna miss if you don't look up well this property is an adults only resort and this time we decided that we would go all-inclusive. So we're not having to worry about how much this cocktail costs or how much that meal costs. We can just get on with the business of relaxing. So when you check in, they give you one of these wristbands and the sensor built into the bracelet here opens the door of your room. It also opens the gates scattered around the hotel. It's really quite convenient, as long as you don't lose it, of course. And as you're sat here filling out your forms or talking to your holiday rep, just spare a moment and have a look at these wonderful murals built into the walls all the way around the resort. They really are quite spectacular. As you can see, I'm really trying to plug the concrete brutalism here. Yeah, there we go. The mural is by Cesar Manrique back in 1976. There's artwork all over the place, but let's come out of reception and have a look at this phenomenal central atrium. Now they've tried to build a tropical garden down here. And then we look up to the accommodations. Let's have a wander through that little jungle, shall we? Despite all the concrete, this central atrium certainly lends the area a feel of nature. It's very relaxing. The water features are beautiful. The atrium extends all the way through the center of the hotel. 
I really do like this, it's so pretty. More water features. And more concrete brutalism. It's a perfect combination, isn't it? What do you think of these floating, hammocky style beds? And at the end of the atrium is one of the hotel restaurants. This one is called Capella. There are four restaurants to choose from in the hotel. Capella is the Italian restaurant. And we're gonna see a Middle Eastern and a fish restaurant later on. And of course, there's Malva, which is the buffet where you have your breakfast and your lunch and dinner, if that's what you prefer. It's quite nice to explore these parts of the hotel during the day because everybody's outside in the sun and you can have a really good look without upsetting anybody. It's worth checking out the atrium from one of the upper floors. This is ours, the second floor. And there you go, down into that atrium. I really do like that. To the side of the atrium are a collection of shops, clothes and shoes, arts and crafts. And if you want to spring a little bit of extra cash, you can stay in a part of the hotel they call the Reserve. This is like a club class. It has its own lounge, breakfast facilities and swimming pool. The main bar is called Ginger and it's open 24 hours a day. But see how they've split the word into two. Gin, <laughs> jur. As you can imagine, this place gets absolutely rammed packed at night. But during the day when everybody's out at the pool, it's really quiet. So this is where they make all the drinks, cocktails, coffees, teas, anything you desire. What a gorgeous open space this is. Football fans are well catered for. They do have entertainment here of an evening. We've already enjoyed 1980s synth rock band and there was just some nice jazz playing the night we arrived. And of course, I keep reminding myself to look up and not miss any of that brutalism. And finally, here we are at Malva, the food bazaar. This is the buffet restaurant of the hotel. Like a lot of the hotel, the area is quite minimalist, but it's clean and fresh and lots of space and light. This is actually a very pleasant place to have breakfast, lunch or dinner. We'll come back and check out Malva when it's open for breakfast, lunch or dinner. But for now, let's complete our tour of the hotel by checking out the swimming pool area. Now, this is absolutely gorgeous, designed, as I said, by Cesar Manrique. When you see it all on the map there, you realise that this is actually quite a big resort, though it feels quite small and compact, to be honest. The ginger bar also has seats here outside by the pool. Once again, water features are a significant part of the experience. there's an aerobics class, an aqua aerobics class going on over there. Outside by the pool is the shack. This is the pool bar. Obviously drinks and snacks and food. Great hot dogs in there. The final of the four restaurants here at the hotel is La Graciosa Casa de la Mar. This is the fish restaurant. Now Mrs. E and I are not massive fish fans, so it's probably unlikely that we'll go here, but this entrance way is absolutely spectacular. The 
the restaurant itself is off this cute little courtyard. This is very traditional Spanish, isn't it? Much more so than the main parts of the hotel. And it has fabulous views of the ocean and of the tennis courts just below. How about we grab ourselves a couple of beers and go and find Mrs. E? I bet she's been chilling out all the time we've been walking around the hotel. Cheers, Mrs. E. Cheers. So what have you been doing whilst I've been walking around the hotel filming? Sod all. Sod all. Well, after all that walking around, I really need some liquid refreshment. I suppose I could jump into the pool, but you know what? It's bloody freezing in there. It is nearly the end of October after all. Cheers. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to breakfast at the Paradises. <laughs> and the cornerstone of any nutritious breakfast, a steaming big cup of black coffee. Oh, absolutely delicious. Now, we are eating this morning in the Malva Food Bazaar. This is the main buffet restaurant in the hotel, so you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner in here. And the buffet is very, very impressive, especially at breakfast. So let's go and have a look. Big food court, isn't it? sweet tooth, there's pancakes and churros. Loads and loads of fruit for a more healthy start to your day. Or smoothies and juice. Perhaps it's going to be one of those champagne style mornings. Champagne breakfast, anyone? It's a very, very impressive buffet, I'm sure you'll agree. The problem is, you're so spoiled for choppies, it's difficult to know where to start. We usually go for the two plate breakfast. First one, fruit and a little bit of pastry. Swiftly followed by a plate of protein. That's the two plate breakfast for you. Well, that set us up nicely for the day. It's a bit windy, Mrs. E. Are you having fun with your hair there? Yeah, Crystal Tips is back in town. Crystal Tips and Alistair, who remembers that <laughs> cartoon series from the 70s and the 80s? The buffet in the Malva Food Bazaar was amazing for breakfast, and it's really good for dinner and for lunch as well. So we're gonna go and cop a squat around by the pool. Now, one of the great things about this hotel is we've never had a problem finding somewhere to sit around by the pool. There are plenty of sun beds and there isn't that stupid mad dash at 8 a.m. of people going out to chuck their towels down. So we can pretty much go and take our pick. Yep. Let's have a good look at the pool and its environment. into the pool and this water is absolutely freezing cold. Yeah. 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 Oh this is gonna hurt. God, it's only ah! taking you three days. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a giant plunge pool. That is definitely the way to do it. Oh it's salt water as well. Yeah. Ah. How are you enjoying the pool Mrs. E now that you've dragged me in here? <laughs> 
It's lovely. It's refreshing. It's just like a giant plunge pool. It's freezing when you first get in, but once you get in, it's fine. Oh, this is actually quite idyllic, isn't it? This is a fabulous swimming pool. You know, it's never ever very busy in this pool, precisely I think, because it's that shock that people don't like as they get in. Come on, let's go and have lunch at the shack. Lovely spot, the shack bar down by the pool. Mrs. E, what do you fancy for lunch today? I'm not quite sure yet. Hot dog. Let's go for a hot dog. It's always a hot dog. A hot dog and a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Simple but delicious. And of course it sets us up for an entire afternoon of doing, what was it you said? Sod all. Sod all. <laughs> Cheers everybody. Cheers. <laughs> Actually I tell you what, rather than doing sod all, let's have a quick walk down onto the beach here outside the hotel and have a look round. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Then we can do sod all. Remember, we've got to buzz ourselves out with the bracelet. There we go. This area just outside the hotel ground seems to be reserved for fitness classes like yoga and Pilates, but this time they seem to be doing some sort of dance class, Zumba or something. And this is where you can find the hotel's fitness studio, but there is an entrance inside the hotel as well as this beachfront one. It's a small but pretty beach here, just outside the Paradisus Salinas Hotel. Sun is starting to get low in the sky. That's Costa Teguise over there, the main resort. And these umbrellas and sunbeds belong to the hotel. We will be doing a separate video about Costa Teguise, the resort. We'll check out some of the bars and restaurants and some of the sites. But for now, let's continue to have a look around this gorgeous little beach. We call this the cat wall, or is it the catter wall? Seems to be where the local cats get fed. I imagine they help to keep the resort free of mice. That ginger cat is very regular around here. Mrs. E and I are missing our little Lottie. So it's nice to see the local cats. seems to be very popular with windsurfers and kite surfers. Actually, as soon as you step away from the hotel, it gets very windy very quickly. Time for dinner, and we're going for Middle Eastern cuisine tonight. The Samira restaurant. Let's check it out. Yes, this is definitely Middle Eastern cuisine. This menu is actually really quite extensive. And of course, we're gonna be starting with hummus. and citrusy. That chicken shawarma is delicious. Now let's have a look and see what's for dessert. Well, we finished that absolutely delicious meal with a pot of very rich, very decadent chocolate mousse with violet ice cream. Now, if you're as old as me, you'll remember from your childhood sweets called Parma Violets. That's exactly what they tasted of. Absolutely delicious. Well, we've tried the Middle Eastern restaurant here in the hotel. Tomorrow night, we're gonna try the Italian. 
is the day after the night before and tonight we're going for Italian but first we're going to have a cocktail and listen to some tunes by the DJ. Well, it had to be a dry gin martini. Stirred, not shaken. Oh yeah, absolutely perfect. This antipasti plate is absolutely phenomenal. I really don't know where to start. The smell of garlic is so overpowering. My mouth is watering already. Mm. Mm. Well, we've just had dinner here in the Capella restaurant in the hotel, the Italian restaurant. So, Mrs. E, what did you think? The antipasti was very, very good, very tasty. But I think for flavour overall, Samira wins. I agree, that antipasti was phenomenal. But for me, Samira so far is a standout restaurant in this resort. And we're finishing with Liamoncello. Well, we've been here at the Paradisa Salinas Hotel in Lanzarote for just under a week. The weather's been fantastic. Mrs. E, what do you think of the hotel? It's really nice. It's a lovely resort, great food, good facilities. Do you think you could give it a score out of 10? Nine, nine and a half. I think I'm in the same boat. I was thinking around nine. If I was to be picky, sometimes the bar at night can get a bit busy and that's not because the staff don't work hard it's just that they probably need a few more staff and even though the food in the buffet is fantastic at lunch and dinner time it's pretty much the same i think they could do with some they themed night so like a mexican night and a curry night and a french night and an italian night but then of course they've got the other restaurants as well so i think i'm gonna go for nine and a half actually yeah yeah. Would we come back? Yes, definitely. We would definitely come back. Thank you so much for watching this video. We will be having a few more videos from Costa Teguise. In the next one, we're going to be having a wander around the resort. But until the next video, remember, there's always something to see. So get out there and film, film it. it. We are staying at the Melia Paradisus we are staying at the Melia 